10 must have shortcuts and tips to learn in GarageBand. These are also transferable to Logic Pro X. So if you do end up making the switch from GarageBand to Logic Pro X, these are still gonna be really valuable for you. Stick to the end of the video too, where I'm gonna tell you three more bonus tips that I like to use every day, because 10 just wasn't enough because I'm constantly using shortcuts. If you're making music in GarageBand or Logic, and you're trying to get that music heard, then please feel free to subscribe too. My name's Charles, I'm a singer-songwriter, and that's what this channel is all about. As I go through the shortcuts, I'm gonna give quick examples too in my GarageBand session here, and we'll actually just show you how you would use these shortcuts in real time, I guess, so you can actually go and recreate them for yourselves in your own GarageBand sessions. So the first shortcut is Command D, and this is just going to duplicate a track for us, and I'm really using this a lot of other times, and I'll show you how I do this in practice. So it's Command D on your keyboard. You would go to any track and type Command D, and that's just gonna duplicate the exact track with all the settings. So we just duplicated this Steinway Grand Piano track. And I'm doing this a lot because instead of just going up here and doing track, new track, I just duplicate the track. Then I can also bring copy MIDI data down or I can open up Y, this is another shortcut, and that's gonna open up the library. And so I can just go and choose a new instrument. So workflow, um, what I'm doing a lot, if I just go back a bit, I'm gonna delete this, I would say, okay, I want another software instrument under this Steinway Grand Piano. I would go Command D, open up Y, and then choose a different instrument. So let's go Synth, Pad, Emerald Haze. Now we have an Emerald Haze pad loaded and we can start recording that. The next tip is option plus click. This is a really productive tip. It's making copies of regions really quickly. So we just did this workflow. Let's say we want the same MIDI data in this Emerald Haze pad. Well, one way to do it is clicking and do Command C and then clicking here and doing Command V. That's fine too, it's productive, but a faster way is going, let's just delete this, is going option on our keyboard and left click in our mouse. This is going to create a, another copy of this region, and we can put this anywhere. We can also do option click, option click, option click, make tons of different copies. But what I'm doing a lot is, again, I'll go back at the beginning here, delete this, press Y to remove the library, and so I'll do this for these other shortcuts. Command D to make a copy, Y to open up the, the instruments, let's go synthesizer, pad, emerald haze, then I'll do option click, to bring this MIDI data down. So now I have a Steinway and a pad using the same MIDI data. Let's get onto the third shortcut now and how I would use it in context is, this is actually shifting the octaves or the semitones of a region. So this can be great if you want to just change the key, let's say of this pad sound, or you're bringing in samples from from the internet and you need to change the key. Maybe your song is in B and you dragged in a sample that's in A. So you need to shift the key up. A way to do that really quickly is just holding, going to the region and then holding option on your keyboard and then up and down arrow. So keep an eye on this area here and I'm gonna go option up and it's one semitone up now. I'm gonna keep clicking and it's gonna just keep raising the semitones. So I'll go down and then you can go down as well negative negative four, negative five. How I would use this is I do I duplicate the track, I open up Y to bring the library, I, I put the pad in, option click to bring the region down, and then in this I would say I don't want it the same octave, I want it a lower octave. So I would hold option and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and now it's an octave down from this region. So it's gonna give that nice bassy mid low pad underneath our piano. And this goes to the same for audio tracks. If you have an audio track, a snare, a kick, a vocal sample, you can, you can just bring it into your session here and go option up or down to change the semitones. Okay, let's move on to shortcut and tip number four is E. Pressing E or double clicking on a region is going to bring up the editor. So I just did double click there. I can also click on the region and press E. And this is our editor where we can edit our MIDI. And inside our MIDI editor where we can edit, we can do um, this kind of bonus little tips here in the editor. Basically, when we press command in the editor here on our keyboard, it's gonna change our mouse to a pencil. And this gives us the option to just click now any notes here. 
and we can draw notes in, we can draw chords in, we can draw melodies in. We can also, as soon as I let go of options, it's gonna turn it back to this cursor. So I can click and delete things now. Hold option, back to pencil. You know, you have to hold it to have the pencil there. The same thing goes, if, we're, if we press E now to bring down the editor, the same thing goes for this area. If I hold down option, I have a pencil here. So now we can actually draw regions. If I click in this area, nothing's gonna happen. But if I click in this area, it's just gonna draw me regions where now I can actually go double click this or press E. And now I can go in here and draw some notes in. And draw a chord in that way. You can highlight, delete them. Press E to bring this down. I'm just gonna highlight these and delete these. So the tip there is really to bring up the editor quickly and to add more notes. So press E, then we'll press Command. So that's a workflow I do a lot. Let's say I'm listening to the song and I'm like, oh, I don't really like that chord or I don't like that note in the chord. I click it, press E, and then I'm like, mm, I really want this note to be here. Or, you know, that wouldn't work, but maybe I want to add um, the seventh note. So it'd be... I want to add this note. So I would just add this note and then maybe quickly, I just want to lower the velocity of that note because I want it to be a bit softer. So I have it highlighted and I'm just going to lower that velocity. Another quick tip right here though, is let's say you're recording some mini notes and you have some stuff like this, one short mini note like this, a long one and uh, another short one, but you all want them to be like the full bar, right? Let's say in this circumstance, you want them to start here to bar six. So one way to do that is clicking and dragging each one to bar six. Another quick way and the shortcut here is kind of an added little shortcut here is highlighting and then holding shift option. Now when you have shift option in your left hand, you can use your mouse, click and drag. Now they're gonna be put to the same length. So you can make them all here. You can make them all there. And that, I use that a lot because sometimes I want full notes um, and some, maybe I recorded it and one ended early and then that's just a, a speedy little tip. Tip number four is how to cut regions. In GarageBand, we're limited to, um, we don't have any scissor tools to cut. So um, when we're in Logic, we do have some scissor tools available to us. In GarageBand, we have to use the playhead and we just go to wherever we wanna cut. So it can be anywhere here. Let's say it's right here and we do Command T, click the region, Command T. Now we've cut this region. But you can see here, since we had MIDI data there, it erased it from this region. We can open up E, and look at the editor, nothing's there. So keep in mind, when you're gonna cut MIDI data, it's just gonna get rid of that MIDI data. If we wanted this back, we can just drag this out again, and then we can drag these MIDI notes. So workflow for this example is, let's say I like this second chord here and I want this in another area of the song. I'm gonna go right to where the chord starts and I do Command T and because it was right where the chord starts, it didn't delete that data for me. Now I can hold that down Option, do click and make a copy of this area. Maybe my, I wanna start a new part of the song right here. Then I have that second part of the chord then I can press E to open up and look at the MIDI data. I can also do Command D, to kind of bring all the other shortcuts in now. Command D to duplicate this track. So we, now we have two Steinway pianos. And let's change this into a, well, whatever we want. It can be a guitar sound. I don't really know what I'm doing production wise, but this is basically theoretical wise, how we would do things. Tip six is how we play notes really quickly. And in order to do that in GarageBand, we use something called musical typing. So that's Command K. Command K will bring up this keyboard and it's just showcasing our actual computer keyboard where we can play notes. So you can see we have this classical acoustic guitar loaded. So if we play these notes now, can play chord. Say I actually don't want that Put my playhead here. I'm going to press R on my keyboard and now I'm going to record some 
acoustic guitar chord. So I'm just going to do this chord, an F to a G. And you can see at the top of GarageBand here when I play this, oops, sorry, it says F chord. So use this to your advantage if you don't know theory. You can just play things and it will tell you the chord. I can press Command K to get rid of this, Command K to bring it up back up again if we want. Then I can press E to open this, and I might want to quantize this, so maybe I move things into place. And then maybe let's say I actually don't want this second chord, so I go over here and Command T. Now I can delete this. I can double click this or press E again, and I can extend these notes. Tip number seven is using the cycle range, and that's with C on your keyboard. So just by pressing C, it's default at the first um, four bars here, actually three bars in this case. And then whenever I press spacebar, it's just gonna play at the beginning of where, I'm sorry, of where the cycle range is. So for example, if I move this over to bar five and press spacebar now, it's gonna start over here. So I like to do, have C, I press C a lot, and I'm, kind of cycling with the mouse like this a lot and then dragging it because I know whenever I press space bar, I know it will start at that beginning. It's, I'm much faster with that instead of clicking and dragging the playhead all the time and pressing space bar. For example, I know I'm gonna wanna listen to this like a fair amount because I'm just starting the song and I need to get a vibe going. So I'm gonna have that cycled at the top and then I'm just gonna have space bar ready to go and I, can, I know it's gonna start at the beginning. Tip number eight, we kind of already mentioned this one, but it's using Y and F. So Y snaps open the library on this side, like this. And that's all the sounds available in GarageBand. So you can click a track and change the sound of the track. So we can go to orchestral, strings, and change this to a string ensemble. Press Y to clean up that space. F is going to pop out from the right side of the window, and that's gonna be our file browser. This is kind of like a finder window where you can drag in MP3s, WAV files, samples, most likely samples. This is where your samples will be. And you just kind of locate them wherever they are on your computer and then drag them in. So you can be pressing F to get rid of that too. I'm using this a lot, F especially to bring in samples and then Y to change software instruments. So you can kind of think of left side logic stock uh, instrument, instruments and then what F is like your personal um, samples that you got at the internet. Tip number nine is moving the playhead with a shortcut. So for example, if we wanna get over to bar four really quickly to start recording, we can click our mouse, drag the playhead, and go, to, and go here and then press R, and now we'll start recording at bar four. So another way to do that, if our playhead is here, we can just use the comma and period, and we can be pressing them, that's gonna move it full bars. So I'm pressing the period right now and that's going to the right, and if I press the comma, that's gonna bring me back over to the left. So if I know I wanna record at bar four, instead of pressing the mouse to playhead to, and dragging it over here, I can just go period, press it one, four times, one, two, three, or sorry, three times, and then press R. And now I'm recording at bar four. Tip number 10 is opening up automation really quickly. And automation it helps you build dynamics throughout your song. And basically it's it's automating things in GarageBand. And we do open that up by pressing A. And that's gonna shade out these tracks for us. And maybe you did this by mistake once, you actually accidentally just pressed A. That happened to me when I was first started using GarageBand. I didn't really know what this was or what to do. And when it's shaded, you can automate things. And every drop down here has volume. So a volume automation is something really popular to do. If you wanted to do a volume automation on the Steinway Grand Piano, for example, we can click in, and now we have this bar. And this bar, up and down, controls the volume. You can see the fader going left and right. So if I want the, at bar one, to start, let's say, at this volume, but at, then at the end, I want it to be higher, I have to make a dot here, and then I just draw it in. You can see, from here to here, you can see that fader it goes left to right as I move the playhead over. That's gonna automate that volume for us. Now I can just solo this piano so you can hear that. Mm -hmm. 
pretty bad example to hear, but you get the idea. It, you can you automate something over time. And then we just press A to get out of that. So those are 10 tips. Now let me get into three bonus tips that I use a lot. Often I'm bringing up settings. So one way to quickly bring up setting is command comma. So if you, need, if you wanna change where you're hearing the sound from, and that's why I do it a lot, I'm switching interfaces or speakers. So I would go command comma, you know, maybe I don't want my Scarlett, I want it out of the built-in output or maybe a USB or AirPods, and then just X that down. So command comma to bring up the settings. Another bonus tip is just press enter on, in the session, and that's gonna bring your cursor to the position number one. And so if you know you wanna, start the song from the beginning, instead of clicking and dragging over, just make, just press enter and then press spacebar. Enter, spacebar, and you'll start right at the beginning. Third bonus tip is pressing K and R. Now we already pressed R and that's how to, the shortcut to record something. But if you were mid recording and you forgot to put the click on, you can just press K and that's gonna put the metronome on, well, metronome on. It stands for click, which is spelt wrong, but so I'm often doing this. Maybe I forgot to put the click on and I wanna hear it in my headphones. Uh, let's say we were recording this and I didn't have the click on and I need the click on because I'm singing. Instead of restarting the recording, just press K. Now the click's on and we can continue recording. Let me know what other style of GarageBand tutorials you're looking for in a comment. Please subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.